that hit all of the Protoss army right there. I think he's got enough time for the beam. Oh. It's going to be close. Oh, oh my god! Welcome back everyone here to ESL ANZ Champs Winter 2020 for StarCraft 2 as we are approaching the final stretch of games for the night and subsequently the tournament and uh, Light, pretty good series there. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty one-sided, pretty <laughs> dominant from Ender, but you know that was that was one PVZ. We're going to be heading into another. Yeah, I mean we've uh, we're fin finalizing the uh, round robin stages with a bunch mm. of PVZs, and this is probably the uh, best PVZ that we can have for uh, this uh, season with uh, top two of Group A in Thuklau and Risky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of hype surrounding um, Thuklau because of his performance earlier today or earlier this um, A and Z champs in day one and day two. He's done really well for himself. Um, a name, a name that we're not really familiar with. Yeah, uh, we haven't really uh, familiarized ourselves with Thuklau as he didn't uh, have the chance to qualify for the previous two mm. seasons. Now he is here showing uh, his chops against uh, the rest of the Southeast Asian region. Yeah, definitely. And he's going to be up going up against Risky, who, of course, like everyone looks at Risky. Everyone expects him to make it through. Like he hasn't dropped a single series. Is he going to? Uh, maybe. If anyone's going to do it, I believe in Thuklau. Yeah, and this game does have big implications, even mm. though Risky is at the top and Thuklau is sitting there in second place as uh, if Thukdal does lose, I believe that forces a bit of a tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. The the standings would go in a bit of a disarray because a lot of players are going to be um, tied, up, tied up with equal game score and then things have to move to map score um, and potentially even head-to-head -head after that. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, we are just waiting for our game to start and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're just waiting to get into another PVZ again. This uh, today we started off with plenty of PVTs. Um, that was kind of all we had, and now we're just getting into that PVZ matchup instead. We've seen plenty of it already. Um, hopefully, these players they have a little bit different in store for us here. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, yeah, I'm just really curious to see what Risky will pr pr uh, show us mm. in the PVZ matchup because. Uh, um, we have, we've seen mainly ZVT uh, at the moment as we are going to the standings here. Yeah, as I said before, Risky will mm -hmm. be at the very top there with the four and zero. He doesn't really have much to play for because if he loses this series, he still will be qualifying yeah. there in the top two places. And obviously, Thuklau, if he wins this series, then he will have to avoid the tiebreaker by going four and one. If he loses, there will be a tiebreaker there between Thuklau, Azure, and T-Ball. Yeah, we also had a couple of games that were happening off screen as well, off stream, I should say. Um, so these are the currently updated standings. Blisk and Ender are tied up. Razorblader just underneath them with the same score as Demi in Group B. Yeah, so I mean, our next series will be Blisk versus Ender. So that will be a 1v2 mm. to end the round robins. And I guess uh, whoever will win that will be uh, advancing in that first place. And then whoever loses that will be uh, forced into a tiebreaker with Razorblader and Demi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's we're in this weird situation with both groups, right? Like there's a potential tiebreaker between three players where we have to kind of, you know, look at the numbers, look at the maps to figure out who's can actually advance. Yeah, so obviously group A, pretty clear cut. Group B, a bit up in the air, but we can obviously tell um, at the very bottom there, uh, Piglet, Leo Russian, group A, and in group B, Ranger and Justice Simon failing mm. to make it to the next stage. Yeah, unfortunately, it's impossible for them to make it through to the next round of ESL DreamHack Winter. Um, I mean, they had a decent showing. Ranger, Justice Simon, and Piglet, they were able to take some series, able to have some really close series as well. Of course, the standout for me is Piglet versus Risky yesterday. Um, he looked very impressive there. Yeah, I mean, there was a chance there that uh, Piglet might have taken the game, if, uh, especially in that mm. game three, where he did proxy those three barracks. If that uh, drone scout went the <laughs> other way, the Overlord as well, uh, mm. maybe he could have been in a completely different situation here in this group. Yeah, definitely. It was it was quite close. And speaking of, you know, we are going to be getting ready for Risky versus Thuklau, the last, the final game of Group A to to finalize and determine, you know, the standings. Yeah, uh, as I said before, I'm really excited to see how Risky does approach this uh, particular matchup, ZVPs. We do have the vetoes on the screen for you, all of you watching on the stream. And it looks like it's going to be a romance side here picked by Thuklau. And the pick Ooh. by Risky will be Yaganatha. And then our final map, if we get to it, will be on Death Aura. Interesting. So Thoklau opting to go for a more macro-oriented map. Um, wanting to take it to the late game to Risky, which is a 
quite a bold choice. Mm, absolutely. I mean, risky uh, favors going for that macro style against mm. uh, what he probably perceives to be weaker opponents compared to him. And mm. uh, Thuklao, though, he has... He's just surprised us all with how solid his gameplay has been, but he did mm -hmm. lose that series against uh, T Ball Day off stream, so mm -hmm. maybe it's not the right day for him to perform well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully this isn't like, you know, foreboding to what's to come as we did have another very long ZVP the other day on Romantic side where Pilski and I, I don't know if he told you about it, we were stuck in here for an hour. Yeah, I believe Pig was eating uh, the menu logged in that came in he while was. you guys were stuck in here. Yeah. Just like a prison. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it felt like. We were stuck in here with a Zerg and a Protoss that just didn't want to end the game. Like Risky, just he just didn't want to execute. Yeah, but uh, luckily uh, the game did eventually end yeah. running. Right, you guys were able to escape from that uh, <laughs> that, that casting uh, hell, as they would say. It's but uh, yeah, you can only feel for so much when you're playing in those games, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, things devolved a little bit. Uh, it was amazing. Um, it was an experience, to say the least. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you finally tick something out of your uh, your casting checklist. Is that mm -hmm. uh, you cast a out? Was it one hour long? Less than a bit less, right? Yeah, it was uh, 57, yeah, 57 minutes. Seven, yeah, 57. You've casted a 57 minute long game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, as uh, we are now loading into our game here, the first game of this series between the top two players of Group A, it will be Risky versus Thuk Lao. We've got a New Zealand versus Vietnam match here for you guys. And as we said before, it will be on Romanta side. And speaking of which, at the uh, top left side of the map for representing Team, uh, not Team New Zealand, the country of New Zealand is going to be Risky. And spawning in the bottom right, we have our Hanoi boy, he be thick, he be thuk lao. Do you know why he uses the ID Miss Fanta? I have no idea. Yeah. Do, does he like uh, Fanta? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, maybe. I assume so. I Maybe it's unrelated. I don't know if Fanta uh, could mean something else in Vietnamese. Yeah, uh, the producer told us that uh, it's his previous username and he hasn't bothered to change it in-game <laughs> yet. So uh -huh. uh, looks like he's going to be still uh, sticking with that for now, but we'll be calling him Thuk Lao because that is the idea that we are most familiar with him. And also, um, he is uh, a veteran of the RTS scene. I believe I touched upon this yesterday, but... Um, he did uh, actually represent Vietnam in WCG for Brood War Ooh. in uh, 2008, I believe. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately for him, he had to play a Protoss player from Korea, and his name was uh, Stork. I don't know if you've heard of him before, <laughs> but uh, that was a pretty one-sided ser uh, series between the two players. And uh, that is... Um, I, th mm. I think that kind of sums up like uh, Thuk Lao's legacy in mm. the Southeast Asian region in terms of RTS games, that he's been around for a very long time. Mm. And personally for me, it's really surprising to see him... Uh, keep up with all these players in the Southeast Asian region for StarCraft 2. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting that he's continuing to be active. Um, there are a couple of players like, I don't know, Revenant, which is comparable, I guess, since he was active back in the day in Warcraft 3 and is still semi-active in StarCraft, but not, you know, compared to Thok Lao. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Revenant is a good friend of mine, actually, because mm. we uh, hang out in the uh, Warcraft 3 discords for the region. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he juggles between the two games when mm. he can, but uh, for the most part, he's pretty busy with um, life and um, that, that sort of stuff. So he is not able to dedicate the time for either Warcraft 3 or Starcraft 2, but definitely a, a legend of the Southeast Asian scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's really cool that Thoklao has been able to stick around and is now finally kind of um, starting to bloom and like fruition into a better known player. This is, you know, he hasn't really been able to accomplish much in StarCraft 2, but now like things are starting to switch up. Yeah, as we do see Risky actually taking out that first probe. We've got the Twilight Council coming out here for Thoklao as the expansion has also completed as well. Adept just running across the middle of the map here on Romanta side and all oh, the Zerglings actually keep sneaking in we didn't have a unit uh, in the choke point to stop these Zerglings from getting in. They will get to the mineral line, but more importantly, will they be able to scout out that Twilight Council at the top right? Yeah, it looks like since they have free reign of the main base, they should be able to. Meanwhile, the Adept does go down across the map and sure there's a Stalker here to clean it, clean it up, but I believe they were able to scout the Twilight. Yep, so it looks like that Stalker will be able to mop up those two Zerglings that snuck in there for oh. Risky. Oh no! Wow. Insano doing a really good job just showing us there <sighs> that uh, Risky did not scout it out, but surely 
uh, risky is has calculated this might be uh, a potential strategy here from Thuklao. Yeah, the, the problem is that risky he could like potentially be like, okay, maybe there's a Twilight Council hidden, but that, that's not the point though. There's a Dark Shrine as well. Oh, though, there is an Overlord being uh, sent over here. Will Thuklao be able to uh, kill off that Overlord before it gets that side of the base of Thuklao as that Stalker is now moving up here? Yeah, we shall see. It looks like the Overlord, like, there is no Overlord speed on the way, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to get there. Will he be able to spot the yes, Twilight Council? Will he be able to spot the Dark Shrine? Yes, he scouts out everything, so Risky, he will see the Dark Shrine as well as that robotics mm. facility. Uh, so we'll see how Risky will adapt to this play here from Thuklao. Yeah, as soon as he spotted it, Spores got thrown down on every single one of his bases. Three Spores in production. He's got Queens as well, Roaches on the way. Yep, so we do have the uh, state defenses coming up here for Risky. He doesn't want to be losing to any stray or uh, Dark Templars that might be running into his mineral lines. Mm. As the War Prism is now on the way here for Thuklao. Uh, let's see if he will commit fully to this Dark Templar pressure, knowing that uh, Risky has scouted it out, or whether he'll just use that War Prism to maybe just um, move around, force some sort of pressure without actually building units to do that pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's important to note that dark, uh, the Dark Shrine and DTs, like, you don't have to deal damage with the DTs. You know, the option to turn them into Archons is always there. So you can, you know, go around with double Archons and pick off Overlords, stop the creep spread, maybe pick off a Queen. Oh, we actually do have that War Prism loaded with units in there. Could we please have a look at what's in there? It is... Uh... <laughs> uh, as, uh, Risky is nearly supply blocked with the... Um... Mm with uh, that Overlord going down as the Adept will be making its way back. But War Prism is crossing across the middle of the map. Yeah, and uh, bearing in mind, again, Risky, he is well aware of the DTs. So, I mean, eventually we should see them morph in into Archons. There okay, we go. Yeah, it was three DTs in there. So it looks like it's just going to morph one into an Archon. And then, oh, he's actually warped in another one. And now he's warping two in. And we've got another DT coming out here. So a lot of uh, lot of gas invested into these DTs here from mm. Thuklao. Yeah, and we do see that he is transitioning into charge shots, which is something that Justice Simon attempted to do against uh, his opponent Ender in the previous series. We'll see if Thuklao has a little bit more success here. Yeah, and I really like this uh, observer here from mm. Thuklao just to reveal these crit tumors. We'll be able to snipe down those uh, tumors of Risky and we'll be able to make his way out over here, not in range of that observer for the Queens to be able to snipe it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important because I don't know if you remember in previous days, something that um, is very iconic to Risky was his creep spread and how like out of control it could get later on in the game. Yeah, as we do have Thook now, now starting to build up the Zell account, also starting to build up the Sentry account as he is uh, gesturing to go for that third base. Now we do see him get that Nexus, but the Speed Roaches, uh, Speed Roach upgrade, the Galar Reconstitution is about to complete for Risky, so it looks like he will be favoring heavily the uh, Roaches and then later on the uh, Ravages and perhaps uh, Hydralis and Lurkers if he opts to do so. Oh yeah, definitely. He has he has been committing a lot to these Roaches. Um, I'm surprised that he hasn't opted to go for a fourth quite yet um, as he, yeah, there we go. We do have him droning up a little bit more as he had foregone that a little bit. Yeah, and outside these Queens, there's not really much anti-air that uh, Risky can do with his War Prism. So mm. the War Prism will probably be feeling a bit more confident being on the side of uh, Risky's map as opposed if there were Hydralis out for uh, for Risky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's so that's the value of this War Prism, right? You keep the army back, you keep it in check, you scout where the army is if Risky ever decides to push out, clear out some creep tumors, and even dives in a little bit. Again, he's kind of confident because of the lack of anti air. Yeah, I do feel like uh, I'm not sure where that observer went, but it would be really nice just to have that observer right clicked on the War Prism. It looks mm -hmm. like it actually got taken out by the Queens there um, off camera. So. Uh, looks like that War Prism will be uh, just trying to find another avenue of entry to get some damage done. But while he is moving that War Prism around the map, that third has been secured by Thuklao. While Risky, uh, he only has just plopped down his own fourth there. And it is at the lower ground as opposed to the uh, high ground at 12 o'clock. Yeah, an interesting positioning there as it is, you know, surrounded by minerals at the moment, um, which, uh, I mean, they can be opened up later on to help defend it. Meanwhile, we do have a lot of lings on the way as Bailing Nest was finished up earlier. Bailing Speed is on the way. Yeah, so it looks like we've got a bit of a ling transition here from Risky. 
And we also got the Spy on the way for him. So maybe we'll be seeing those Corruptors or Mutalists coming out here for our New Zealand Zerg player. We also got an Archon drop from that initial War Prism. Just a lot of value here with this uh, War Prism, just scouting out. But also, more importantly for Thukla, he didn't lose any of those Archons at all. So they're retaining the value over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Meanwhile, we do have the Huzulet. Oh, did he actually spot the Spire? Um, he went back there and he <laughs> did spot the Spire. So risky going for the going for some kind of hidden tech, but Thokla was able to spot that. Yeah, as we do see, Ravages now morphed from a couple of those roaches. So that will be some extra anti-air to deal with the War Prism if it does drop once again. And also got the transition to the Immortals, given the fact that Risky is going for primarily a roach-based army here as we transition to the mid to late game. Yeah, exactly. I do like that Folklau, he did throw down a little bit of static defense um, because, again, all it needs, all you need are five to six muters to just go into a mineral line and then they can start one-shotting probes. So Folklau, he's already got that in the back of his mind, but Risky, we've gotten to the point where he's about to max out on Roach Lingvane. Yeah, and one thing to note, uh, Folklau, compared to the other Protoss players in this tournament, is that we don't see any disruptors from him at all. He's actually going straight towards the Colossus, getting mm -hmm. the extended Thermal Lance upgrade for those Colossus as well. He's even adding a second robotics uh, uh, robotics facility, actually, too. So got the blink going as well. Yeah, he, def he definitely does. Um, and with this army, to be fair, he has... Oh, no, don't lose an immortal for free. Like, they're so important against this army. Yeah, that is gone. Oh. And, uh, yeah, a bit of a... I think that's, like, one of the first uh, few sloppy plays there from Tukla in this mm -hmm. game by losing that uh, immortal. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, you desperately need them against this Roach Raptor-based composition. Oh, nice force fields, though. Yeah, very nice force fields. Forces the Corrosive Bars. The Colossus is out of position here, but it doesn't seem like Risky wants to go for the Snipe. Yeah, and something that I love is Thuklau. Even though the base isn't done, we do have two shield batteries to help support the army, but the base is connect! Oh, no! Thuklau just moves his army forward just slightly, and that connects with a lot of these banelings, and the majority of the units of Thuklau go down as the Ravages and the Lings just barrel down onto the fourth base here of Thuklau. And I think with the next rally of units that come in here for Risky, that is going to be a dead fourth base. Oh, exactly. Thuklau, he lost so much there. The banelings, they connected with the center of the army, and because of that, like, the majority Ooh. of the Immortals went down, the majority of the Colossus. Yes, as we do see the Western Union Economy Tracker, the Dark Templar drop doing a bit of damage, but Risky does clean that up. And with that additional base there for Risky, he is quite ahead in terms of his income. Yeah, definitely. Thuklau, he's, he's struggling at the moment. He lost so much of his high-tech units. They're so expensive to replace, and it takes so long to recharge your energy on things like sentries as well. Yeah, and looks like Thuklau is just trying to buy some time to get those higher-tech units out, such as the Colossus. And you've got to remember as well, he lost a few Immortals as well during that skirmish. As mm. we do see the Changelings coming in for uh, Risky onto that expansion, and Risky's actually just moving towards the other side of the map. You can see... Uh, with how big this map is, he's just mm. spreading the creep out towards the side that Thuklau is not even caring about, which is that left side. Yeah, and Risky at the moment, he's just going for some multi prong looking to try and hit the third and the fourth at the same time. Yeah, as this uh, third base here from Thuklau looking very vulnerable. The Nexus immediately goes down, and oh my god, he's actually a multi pronged harass here from Risky as that base there, the fourth base I should say, goes down immediately. Will Risky be able to snipe this third base too here? It looks like Thuklau, he should be able to hold on as he, as he does pull his entire army back, does hold on to his third now. And the problem is, though, that Risky, he, again, we've been here before, he has such a good economy that it doesn't even matter that he lost that army. He's just transitioning. We've got Vipers on the way. Hive is done. Yeah, it feels like these uh, Dark Templar run by from Thuklau aren't really accomplishing as much as he wants them to uh, be doing. And that War Prism just roaming around the map and not really getting much accomplished here. As we do see Thuklau moving forward with his army. A lot of Stalkers, a lot of Colossus and an Archon there just to provide some extra splash damage as well. There we go. There's a drop from the War Prism. He's trying to snipe down that uh, hatchery that was just freshly built, but it looks like the army of Risky is able to deflect that War Prism away. Yeah, like, I, I appreciate the all this harass. Um, it just feels like it hasn't been doing too much. It feels like the it's just been damaging the hatcheries and not so much the workers. All right, so we do see Thuklau retaking that fourth base, crossing his fingers that Risky won't be going for another attack again. And this is a lot of units out here for Risky. 
risky as he is nearly maxed out. Mm. As we do also see the upgrades for him, he is getting the uh, the plus two onto the range upgrades as well. He can just uh, expend those Zerglings. They're not really too useful at this point of the game. As I said, he's just rebuilding those. So I guess it's always just nice to have a, like a control group of Zerglings just running around, just preventing expansions. But we do have a counterattack here from Risky onto the third base of Thukla. Does Thukla have the uh, amount of units to defend from this attack? Yeah, he has some decent stack defense, but the majority of it gets depowered. He has a couple of Zealots, but it looks like there are just too many Roaches here. So Thukla, he's going to have to commit a little bit more to that defense, but he doesn't want to pull too much away because the main army is threatening his fort. Yeah, we can see here uh, how well these two players are uh, at uh, multitasking as he is trying to keep that base alive but we also see Risky trying to posture to take out that fourth base we do see a lot of stalkers come here from that main army of Thuklau to join up with those stalkers at the expansion and it will be enough to force those roaches to retreat I will say that Thuk Lao, like, he does have two Disruptors and he has two more on the way. With a total of four, like, with juicy shots, you can, you know, hold once again against this army. Like, you can get some decent trades. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Disruptor shots, if you get those on a big ball of Banelings and Zerglings, mm. then that will uh, immediately shift the game back into your favor. And again, especially given the fact that the the hitbox of those Banelings are so small, you can get a mm. lot of damage done with the Disruptors. Speaking of which, we do have the Banelings, Zerglings, and Roaches coming in here to the third base. I don't think there is uh, enough here for Thor Glad, oh. but we do have to disrupt this, but really nice oh. splits there from Risky to mitigate a lot of that damage that could have happened. Exactly. Nicely done. Able to pull back. Almost no Banelings went down to those Disruptors. And at the same time, we do have Thoklau. He is, okay, trans <laughs> he is <laughs> rotating his workers around, avoiding this big run by. Oh, we do have the... Oh my god, that is a lot of damage done onto the pros. That 22 pros done. We got a counterattack as well at the other face of uh, Thuklau as those Banelings come in. And that is 30 probes gone there for our Vietnamese Protoss player. Risky looking so good in in this first game, you can see his bank is nearly at 2k, 2k. He's, re uh, he's remaxed out once again, and Thuklau is just uh, being spread all over the map. He can't really have a, any sort of answer to this play here from Risky. Exactly. He was trying to transfer his workers safely from one base to the other, but the problem was there were Banelings all over the place. They were at the fourth, they were at the third, they connected, 30 workers went down, and now Thuklau, he's down to a measly 33. Yeah, and you can see the fresh rally of Zerglings at the six o'clock position. He wants to take out that uh, third base once again, uh, probably just for the rest of the game as well. Risky also trying to, uh, sorry, Thuklau trying to go for a attack there in the middle of the map, trying to hit that rich Vespian geyser base here of Risky, but Risky does have those Vipers out, and Thuklau has to be very careful to make sure that they aren't abducted, those Colossus. Okay, it looks like he's just going to go for the Disruptors instead. Exactly, and what's important is that he was trying to push up a ramp into Lurkers. Like, the defensive position for Risky is insane. There's really nothing for Thuklau to do, and he's forced to. Like, he's essentially all in. He has to to try and end the game with his army. Yeah, but we do see the Banelings coming in here for Risky. Onto, oh, nice force wizards though, mitigating a lot of the surface area, but it might just not be enough here for Thuklau as we do see the rest of the army falling. A lot of the probes are already dead. No bases mining whatsoever here for Thuklau. I think this might be the beginning of the end here for him. Exactly. The Banelings, they get in, crash upon everything, and now there's only two Colossus remaining. There's nothing to stop all of these lurkers. The main army of Risky as he is pushing into the main at the same time. Yep, and that is it. GG. Risky will take game one of this series. Will Thuklau make it back to a 1-1 one and one, or will Risky take it with a 2-0?
Protoss army right there. I think he's got enough time for the beam. Oh. It's going to be close. Oh, oh my god! Welcome back here to game two of this uh, Clash of the Titans in Group A between Risky and Thuplau. Risky taking out game one there. And uh, it was a pretty impressive uh, game there from Risky. Uh, it fair to say it was pretty uh, one side. You could see the uh, golf in skill between the two players. Yeah, we just got to the point where Risky, he just maxed out and then he just kind of tore Thoklau apart. He was doing a decent job at attempting to defend multiple places at once, but slowly but surely, every single time Risky, he would just deal the damage. Yeah, and on, on the contrary as well, uh, Thuklau, he was trying to do those uh, Zealot and Dark Templar warp but mm -hmm. Risky was on top of all of those. And unfortunately for Thuklau, he wasn't able to get that economic damage done. And as a result, you could see there so many banelings for Risky and he just barreled his way through and uh, was able to take the victory. Yeah, it was so difficult for Thoklau to maintain this fourth base. Again, a pretty interesting um, location to take it because it's on the low ground. It's a lot more difficult to hold on to. And as we saw, the, the concave of the Zerg was just a little bit too much. Yeah, and even though he did have those disruptors out uh, on the map to deal with those banelings, it might have been just too little too late for Thoklau to take advantage of it. Also, you have to give uh, <laughs> props to Risky. And with the slow-mo yeah. there of all those uh, probes <laughs> going down. Yeah, like, give big props to Risky, just managing those banelings very well, just mm -hmm. doing a lot of good splits with those banelings to avoid those disruptor hits. Yeah, definitely. I will say that, you know, again, even though he invested into four disruptors, only one big shot went off, and we just saw it. It also included his probes. Yeah, and then you can see there, uh, once uh, Thuklau wasn't able to establish that next base, he decided to tap out. And, yeah, we are going on to our next game here. It will be on... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yaganatha. I'm just going to say it with a soft J. Mm -hmm. yeah. With and, confidence. Yes, and uh, we've seen this map uh, quite a bit over the past few days, and uh, it's all about those speed zones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if they get incorporated in this game, in this matchup. And I'm just looking at Thokwa to see what he can do here, because in game one, he did go for a, t a DT opening, and it did end up getting scouted. But again, like that's not all Protoss has available to them. Yeah, uh, he did transition that into a couple of Archons, but they didn't really do too much. Uh, Risky was really on top of his scouting uh, mm. with the Overlords and especially those uh, two initial lings that we were able to run by as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, in this game here on Yaganatha that uh, we could see uh, Thuklau maybe just prevent some of this scouting that Risky was able to get away with. Yeah, definitely. It was something unfortunate. You know, the lings they got in, they didn't manage to scout it, but it was just the follow-up Overlord. He didn't even have Overlord speed, I believe. It was just a slow one and it managed to go all the way into the main base, scouted everything that there was for Thuklau. Um, but to be fair, likewise, you know, Risky, he, he threw down the Spire in the back of his main and Thuklau was able to spot that. Um, but Mutas didn't really come into yeah, play. Yeah, I don't think we saw a single <laughs> Muta, actually. Maybe yeah. it was just there to dupe out Thuklau. But mm. also, uh, one thing to also note about this upcoming map that we are going on to is that it is a very big map. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll be seeing a different opening here from Thulcloud instead of the Warp Prism with the Dark Templars. Maybe we'll be seeing a Stargate opening, maybe a Proxy Oracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, it's a very long map. You know, you can hide something towards the corners of, of the map itself. Um, I will also say that it's a little bit easier to establish a fourth base. Um, it isn't vulnerable there in the low ground. You can go all the way over to the right-hand side on that high ground. Um, it is a little bit further away, but also kind of more defendable. All right, so you can hear the, uh, the countdown coming in for... Uh, this game here on Yayanatha, we've got Risky with the 1-0 lead. He's already qualified for DreamHack Masters, mm -hmm. so honestly, this is all about pride. He just wants to make sure that he's uh, able to get that 5-0 uh, and zero in his group and be numero uno there in Group 1. <laughs> yeah, uh, group yeah. <laughs> Again, it's more important for Thoklau to really bring it home here and put a point on the board, maybe even cause that upset. Yeah, absolutely. As we are now loading into our game here on Yaganatha, one of the new maps in the competitive map pool for for StarCraft 2. Yeah, we're yep. loading in and getting into another, and not the last one, PVZ. Yeah, so we do have uh, Risky here at the bottom left, and at the top right will be Thuklau. So I was curious, you know, as a, as a Brood War connoisseur, you were talking earlier about how Mineral Wars, that's something that's been around for a long time in both games. Yep. Um, what about something like these speed zones? No, I don't think uh, speed zones uh, are actually programmable in uh, Brood War. <laughs> uh, it might be very difficult to try mm. and fig uh, figure out a way of uh, implementing that because I don't think you can actually t change the uh, way that the uh, units oh. move in like a certain part of the map in mm -hmm. the um, 
in the editor. Like, by the way, like in Brood War, it's all done through third-party editors. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe in StarCraft 2, it's all through the Blizzard editor yeah. to make the maps. So, yeah, there's less tools uh, in the original map editor for Brood War. So, obviously, everything's done uh, in a third-party editor. And But I don't think uh, it's actually possible to put a speed zone <laughs> in a map. I would love to see it. <laughs> and I know it's possible on, like, uh, custom maps, but I don't think it's possible on a melee map. Mm, okay, okay. Interesting. Um, as here in StarCraft, you know, we've messed around earlier, I think now two years ago, there were the slow zones. Now there are the speed zones. Um, Blizzard, they were messing around with neutral missile turrets as well. <laughs> um, I, I think that was a thing in Brood War, question mark? Uh, like where missile turrets attack random uh, units that yeah, come yeah. in? No, yeah, yeah. No, like, no, no, that wasn't a thing. Oh, but um, okay. one thing I really liked back in the day for StarCraft 2 was the uh, lava zones. Mm, uh, I believe yeah. there was a map in the Red Bull tournaments that yeah. had that. Yes. Yeah. 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 There'd be like a timer on the screen, yeah. and every so often the lava would raise, and anything caught on the low ground would just set aflame. Yeah. <laughs> I would really like to see that again. But mm. uh, yeah. Uh, like my favorite map that n never gets love was a uh, Core How Knockout Compound. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, the eight player map, but it was obviously um, you couldn't spawn right close to each other. But I like, guess mm -hmm. um, the players didn't really like the randomness behind it. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's changed over time, where even in the past, four player maps were a little bit more common. Nowadays, it's nothing but two player. Yeah, and it, it is a shame because uh, for me personally, I really do dig a nice three player map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think the last one we had on, in StarCraft 2 was called um, uh, Cactus Valley. Um, I believe that was there the was last. There was also um, the, uh, Catalina. Catalina, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, but uh, obviously, everyone's uh, favoring these two player maps in the uh, current state of the game as we mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's get back into this game. Uh, we do have the uh, quick Stargate actually from Thuklau, so maybe mm -hmm. we'll be seeing the uh, the quick Oracle. Oh, yeah, it's definitely possible. Like, again, when it comes to a Stargate opening, you can go for the Oracle, the Void Ray, or the Phoenix. You know, they all have their own advantages and disadvantages. And we've gone to the stage where e either one of them are, is viable. Yep, and it is going to be the Oracle here from Thuklau. So mm. let's see uh, how he utilizes that Oracle, whether he'll just be using it purely just to um, get some harassment done on the drones or just use it, because it is one of the faster... I think it is the fastest Protoss unit that they have. Yeah. 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 So you can use that just to scout around. Uh, you just got to be careful not to be caught off guard with the Queens because mm. if you lose that Oracle, you do get uh, set back quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. And we'll keep an eye on that as well. If he goes for a single Oracle opener or double or even a player like Stats, he prefers going for triple Oracle opening. Yeah. And with that, like you have the potential to go in, potentially snipe a Queen and, you know, they can um, tank a lot more damage from Spores as yeah, well. Yeah. And also if you keep those Oracles, you don't lose them. They do build up that energy over mm. time and you can use the Oracle Oracle's capabilities that it has with the uh, Stasis Wards as well mm -hmm. as the uh, Revelation later on in the mid and late game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. They have a lot of utility available to them. But at the moment, we do see it is only a single Oracle that's being sent out across the map looking to try and find some drone damage. And we do see in the production tab, actually, uh, Thuklau is actually going for both the Twilight Council and Robotics Facility. So it seems like uh, it is a bit of a story that we saw yesterday with, I believe it was just a Simon. He couldn't really figure out which tech he wanted to stick with um, mm. before he got to his third base. And it looks like it, uh, it, we do see something similar here with uh, Thuklau going for both... Um, <laughs> that robot and Twilight Council too. Yeah, and Risky, he sees everything in the main at least. We do have the or the Overlord was just sat on top of the Nexus for quite some time. Thucklound finally going to get rid of it. But yeah, a lot was saw, was scouted. Sorry, um, even the fact that there is a second Oracle on the way. Yeah, and we did have a pretty quick uh, Roach Warren coming in here for Risky. So maybe there is a chance for Risky to punish this, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, sort of indecisiveness here from Thucklau that he can't really stick to one particular uh, tech and just like rally ro roaches over and kill him off but looks like Thuklau at the moment is posturing to go for a third base and with Risky droning up I don't think we're going to be seeing a roach rally. Yeah, definitely. Like, typically in this matchup, when you scout a Stargate opening, um, that kind of indicates, like, hey, I can just drone up. Like, as long as I have spores and queens, like, my mineral line should be fine. There aren't going to be any ground units, so I don't have to waste larva on roaches or lings um, at the moment. Yeah, so we do see the uh, double Oracle play here from Thuklau. Does just mm. get the uh, Revelation off into the main base, so we'll know the, uh, the progress of that uh, lair timing. Yeah, and behind this, we have, as you were saying, um, we have a Robotics Bay on the way. So we could be seeing um, either, you know, Disruptors or Colossus coming out from Thuklau. Earlier, we have seen War Prism and War Prism Speed be incorporated. Oh, loses an Oracle, though. So um, that's going to be less DPS that these Oracles are able to provide onto those drones, which uh, two did get killed. Um, mm. 
in the thick of things, I'd rather be losing uh, two drones than uh, that Oracle. <laughs> yeah, definitely. As we were talking about earlier, you know, the, the utility that an Oracle can provide, um, whether it's with the Stasis Wards or re revelations on army units as well to keep tabs on where they are throughout the map. All right, we've got a couple of depths here. I really like the uh, pylon placement with the adepts just tucking themselves behind that pylon to mm. reduce the surface area that those Zerglings can come in to that third base. And looks like Risky will just be giving him that base while taking a fourth base of his own. He's also grabbing the plus one range ground weapons as well as the Roach speed upgrade too. So it looks like it's going to be a very similar... Oh, actually, we've got a quick infestation pit here. Oh, interesting. So we'll be seeing if he goes into a faster hive or if he, you know, does something else. Previously, we've seen Risky go for something like Swarm Host. Um, it's a little bit out of meta nowadays, but it used to be the go-to in this matchup. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, we did see Swarm Host in uh, that ZVT between Risky mm. and Piglet, uh, utilizing them to great effect against Piglet's mechanic style. Mm. But uh, we'll see if he decides to use them here in this uh, matchup. Yeah, he's actually building him in the... Oh, no, those are Ravagers, sorry. <laughs> uh, I get confused by the icon sometimes yeah yeah at the moment so we'll, we have to wait and see what the infestation pit is going to be used for meanwhile just roaches in production and oh we have the hydrogen being thrown down yeah a bit of a quirky timing there with that hydrogen mm. usually you would want to get that uh asap with that uh, roach warren but it looks like he wants to um, maybe grab some uh uh hydras just to help with the dps against any sort of uh air uh units that Thuklau might be thinking about going, and we do see Thuklau actually going to the Disruptors after building that first initial Colossus. Mm -hmm. And also taking that fourth base as well, so it looks like these players are happy just to split the map at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I do like that Thuklau, he's already starting to diversify his AoE, you know, he has Colossus, he has Disruptors, eventually I'm, I imagine he's going to be wanting Ooh. to get some High Templar as well. Got Lurk Den on the way as well, so mm. it looks like this is a very Demi-inspired playstyle here from Risky <laughs> here in Game 2 on Yaganatha, where, you know, you use the Lurkers to hold onto your expansions and force errors from your opponent. Mm. Uh, to get the kills onto the units. Yeah, definitely. Hydra, Lurker, Viper, that's the ideal composition you want to get into. Um, and typically, you line up the Lurker with the Lurker Den with the Hive for those Lurker upgrades as you can extend their range and their borrow speed. Yeah, speaking of Hive upgrade, it is around halfway done here for Risky as he is also taking that bottom right base as well. So it looks like he will be just swarming all across the map, taking as many expansions as possible because he knows that Thuklau isn't uh, thinking about mm. moving out at all. And we do have a Zergling run by here at the fourth base, or the third base, rather, of uh, Thuklau gets some uh, damage done, but nothing too critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's scary is that Thuklau, he hasn't really been trying to stop this creep spread that has been slowly going across the map for Risky. It's already past the halfway point. So many creep tumors, and eventually they're going to just reach the fourth. Yeah, and this is where uh, having those two oracles would be really useful for Thuklau. When you mm -hmm. accompany that with, a, with an observer, you're mm -hmm. able to snipe away those creep tumors that are building across the map and just delay that creep spread of the Zerg player. We've got another run by here at the fourth base, but a blink forward there from Thukla and should be enough. Uh, actually forces a stasis ward, so a bit uh, unfortunate there mm. for Thukla. Yeah, it definitely does force the Stasis War to be triggered with only a single Zergling, which is not something that you do want to see. Meanwhile, Risky, he is prioritizing that Lurker range over Lurker Borrow speed there as he is working on those Hive, up hive upgrades and the army. It's pushing forward, getting the Creeping Queens. Yeah, Thuklau is now pushing forward. He's getting the War Prison speed as well. More Disruptors coming in. Got a Roach run by here, but a nice warp in of Stalkers at the fourth base here for Thuklau is enough to deflect that Roach attack. And let's see what Risky has has to defend here as he is now morphing those lurkers. Yeah, he's already got four burrowed, four more on the way. So a total of eight and eight lurkers. Like, oh god, you just you just can't push into that. Yeah, the big question is, does Risky have the uh, energy onto the vipers? And yes, oh, he yeah. does. So we should be seeing those ducks onto what unit will it be? No, Ooh. nothing actually. There's the Binding Cloud, though, to stop the Stalkers from clearing out that uh, low HP Viper. Yeah, it's so tempting to just dive in and just yoink whatever you can, but Thuklau, he was on top of it. He was willing to blink under and snipe off one of those Vipers, but Risky pulled away just in time. Ooh, the Disruptors there actually catching a few units off guard. We've got a Rizling run by as well at the fourth base once again. 
from Risky. Nice force fields will uh, divide the uh, ar uh, armies between the two base, the, the base and the army of uh, Thukloud. There's a stasis ward, and that is no more stasis wards there at the fourth. Yeah, it looks like Risky is trying to find the opportunities here and there. He's going for a Ling run by over to the fourth base location. There is plenty of stack defense, but no units. Yeah, let's see if uh, he has what it takes to uh, warp in some units at the moment. Maybe they're still on Ooh. cooldown because I don't see any more units. Looks like he's just going to send the Stalkers over to that third base. And Risky is just uh, trying to uh, trying to tax the multitasking here of Thukla at the moment as it does look like we do have a... Uh, much more of a split match situation between the two players. That top bottom right base of Risky is starting to get saturated. Let's see if Risky decides to take another base as well while he moves his Lurkers forward. Yeah, honestly, I was very surprised. Stucklout, who was forced to pull back his entire army to help defend against that run by, and he's going in again. As this is happening, Risky is looking to try and get into the top left, and he does yoink a couple of disruptors. Yep, so those disruptors are gone. That's going to be some less. Uh, oh, we got <gasps> the purification. No, but he doesn't unborrow. So that is like three Lurkers down there from Risky. That could have been a lot worse. Though. Oh, yeah, definitely. But nicely done, able to pick off a couple of lurkers. There are still plenty more where that came from. Meanwhile, Thuklao was able to defend over on his fourth base location. So he wasn't forced to be to recall or pull his entire army back. He's still posturing out here in the center. Yeah, we can see there Risky is just establishing the creep spread once again at the left side of the map, mm. while Thuklao is kind of occupied here on the right side of the map. And you do have that big ball of Stalkers, but only one Colossus and a few Disruptors actually just stray there by the oh. Speed Aura. Yeah, and he, his army is actually getting split up at the, at the moment as the Lurkers, they do come forward, they do borrow. Okay, we do have the Yoinks though from the uh, Vipers with the Knights of Ducks, but the Purification Nova is coming in, getting some damage done onto the Lurkers, but nothing too critical with those Purification Novas and Thukla is forced to retreat. Yeah, and honestly, Risky, it was kind of strange. Like, his army was split up, but it feels like he doesn't have too much to protect the Lurkers. Yeah, he's only got these uh, Zerglings as well as the Hydralis, and they are very brittle against the army composition that Thuklao is going for. Speaking of which, we do see a carrier there in the production tab, so we're going to be seeing a transition to the Mass Airs. Another Purification Nova gets in. That is a lot of Lurkers being damaged, a few killed. They've got a run by with the Zerglings as well at this uh, base of Risky. Yeah, and I don't know what happened. It's like compared to game number one, where he barely got any disruptors off, so many lurkers have gone down to those disruptor shots. And with this, 16 drones go down, and he's going to be able to defend his fourth. Yeah, he really nicely placed stalkers there, just behind the gateways. Doesn't allow for those zerglings to get in there and uh, force them to uh, die. Oh. And oh, we got the few stray disruptors once again. Oh, actually. Oh. That yeah. Was, yeah, I think it was just the rally. Yeah, it looks like with that move command, Risky, he wasn't able to take advantage of that. He could have maybe sniped one or two disruptors, but they were they were able to survive. Speaking of snipe, really nice snipes there onto the, both the Ravages and Ravages of Risky. And after such a great game one, Risky looking, uh, he is the one that is the uh, defender here in game two. It looks like he's just uh, sitting here, just trying to force an error here from Thukla. But thank thankfully for Thukla, he is playing a very solid game here. Exactly. Again, for the majority of this game, these Zorkers have just been so exposed. Like, Risky, he's really been lacking these Hydras to help support them, to help make sure that Thuklao doesn't get on top of them. Yeah, and we do see, though, the Viper count is starting to add up here for Risky, but the big risk that uh, Risky has <laughs> is that you don't want to have too many Vipers because that means that you won't have any fighting units to deal with the army of Thuklao unless you do decide to uh, turtle up and get a lot of uh, Spine and Spore Crawlers Ooh. to defend your bases. Yeah, nicely done. Able to blink forward, snipe a couple of Vipers, and and he does spot this move out with those DTs. He should be aware that Risky has split off a section of his army, sending lurkers into his natural. Oh, we got a counterattack here towards the uh, main base of the Thuklau. A few lurkers and a few Hydralis just barreling down. And oh. He finds, oh, nice abducts there from Risky. We'll take out the Colossus. I think this uh, little army that Thuklau was working with will uh, go down as uh, Thuklau is actually retreating here. Risky will retreat in response. I still think this is a little bit in favor of Thuklau, though, because the important thing is this entire time he's slowly been working on that carry account it's been, been getting higher and higher and i don't believe risky has a spire or at least he hasn't noticed that he needs a spire to transition out of these hydrants also you can see thuklao starting to get the uh, template tech he's starting to research psionic storm that's always a useful skill to have and more importantly <laughs> no, the the vipers! Vipers, no! oh, oh my god no. every single viper goes down 
Oh, no, Risky's knees are weak and his arms are heavy because he lost a lot of Vipers there. And I think that might have been uh, what seals the game here for Thuklau because that was, what, maybe 20 supply worth of Vipers with full <laughs> energy as well going down. Oh, my God. Disastrous move there by Risky. Loses all of them. And now there are just Lurkers and Hydras here. And what's that going to do against all of this oh. AoE, all these carriers as well? Yeah, Risky it does snipe the Observer. But mm. is that going to be enough? We've got a counter attack Ooh. here at the fourth base. One, uh, the third base, sorry, once again here for Risky, but we do see the march of units coming down here for Thuklau. Thuklau has actually just moved his units across into those lurkers, so yeah. those lurkers are going to go down, but the carries are out here for Thuklau. Oh god, yeah, the high tempo that were caught out of position, so a couple do Stop. go down, and yeah, no storm, no recoil use either. Oh, but we got these disruptors here, just uh, very stray, very exposed. But we do have Thuklau moving forward. I would really like to see a war prison with that uh, little army mm -hmm. just to help reinforce. But at the moment, Thuklau is trying to do multiple things at oh. once. The really nice force field there from Thuklau blocking the ramp. Oh, and the duck, though, onto the carrier. That will take that out. But there are a couple more carriers here onto the high ground. And what Thuklau wants to do right now is take out as much tech as he can. Oh, and these two lurkers are doing so much damage. They were able to take out the hat. Sorry, the Nexus. But on the other side of the map, we do see that the Hive is going to be going down. It should be targeted down, and Thuklau, he has to make sure he doesn't overstay his welcome. He needs to recall once he de once he deals the damage. Yeah, another nice force field as well, just delaying that big Hydra army. <laughs> we do see a storm there onto the ramp, get some damage done onto these Hydras. But where is this recall? He really needs to recall out of here because he doesn't want to be losing all of these units, especially given the fact that he did lose his third base. Oh my god, okay, there it is. <laughs> he recalls just in time. I was a little bit concerned that he wanted to commit and stay around with his his army but he does pull back yeah but the hive did go down but mm -hmm. more importantly though he didn't take the hydralist then and that is the crux of the army composition that risky is going for if he killed that hydralist then mm -hmm. risky would have been a lot behind than he is right now yeah exactly and now risky like he's still got plenty of hydras he's got lurkers to be fair that's all he has for now because the lurker den was sniped earlier um but risky it looks like he doesn't feel confident enough to push out what's important is that this third base did go down earlier just to two lurkers oh, uh. this one hydralist as well just completely shutting down that fifth base of Thuklau. Mm. Maybe it's time for Thuklau maybe to think about going for the fifth base at the top left side. There is an overlord there, but mm. no fighting units for Risky to stop from going down. And we do see a blink forward here. Once again, the Viper is exposed, but nicer uh, Binding Cloud will stop those Stalkers from firing. Oh, yeah, so he does keep the Vipers alive. Did lose a handful of Lurkers there, but again, the main army of Risky is still looking quite strong. Yeah, we can see here the carry count at... Uh, three, I believe. And nice feedbacks as well onto the Vipers to stop them from abducting the Disruptors. Disruptors getting a lot of hits there onto the Lurkers there, onto the low ground as now we are waiting for Thuklau to just wait for that cooldown to lap before go firing again with another Purification over. And it is a double spy here from Risky. Yeah, yeah, and I love this from Risky. He is going for that transition. Double Spire on the way as he does eventually want to switch into those Corruptors to help deal with the carriers. Yeah, as we do see the Western Union Economy Tracker, Risky, obviously his uh, bases have been relatively unharassed, so his economy is looking really uh, good compared to his opponent, Thuklau, who's been struggling to keep his bases up and running with the constant run buys of Risky. Exactly. Like, it's been a while. Like, Thuklau, he's been stuck on three to four bases this entire game. He desperately needs to expand because Risky for the most part, he's been left alone. Yeah, as we do see this uh, mini death ball coming uh, back to the side that uh, Thuklau is at. A couple of DTs just running by those Hydras, but it does... Uh inform that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, inform Thuklau that there is this uh, army coming in. He's actually just going to recall on top of that Nexus and uh, we'll take out this uh, Hydralis army. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, these runways have done so much for Risky because uh, Thuklau, he's kind of lacking that scouting information that, like, an observer out there on the map to spot whenever these runways happen. That is a lot of Lurkers there on the right side of the map. And as these Dark Templars barrel down their blades onto that hatchery, the Lurkers do get burrowed here at the uh, expansion of Thuklau. Thuklau trying to clear out the... Uh, the lurkers, but uh, we do see Risky just unburying. It looks like the Dark Templars do go, uh, die, and they don't kill the hatchery. No, they do not. They were so close as well, and we do finally have 10 Corruptors on the way. They're going to help so much against not just the carriers, but also that lone Colossus as well. Yeah, let's see if uh, Thuklau is able to transition back to primarily the ground army, uh, given the fact that the Corruptors are in production here for Risky. Maybe he'll be favoring a bit more uh, of a Disruptor play uh, more Templars, more Archons perhaps for the splash damage as well for his army, but he is kind of struggling for resources at the moment. His mm. gas isn't looking too pretty. 
Yeah, I, I would kind of like it if Thoklau kind of rotated around and started applying pressure primarily over on the left-hand side. He's done a decent job at killing a hatchery, but yeah, not too much. And oh, the Nexus is going to go down. Yeah, a nice target fire there from Risky. So that Nexus will go down once again. Uh, to be frank, though, I think that base has uh, lost uh, most of its resources. Mm -hmm. It might not be worth for Thuklau to replace that Nexus that was just killed. But we do see Thuklau here with his uh, big army trying to barrel forward, trying to find a base to kill. But there is just no avenue of entry here. The Corruptors mm -hmm. with the Abduct immediately will take out that carrier and uh, I think slowly but surely this yeah. will be uh, Rissi's game because his bases are still running. Exactly. Like, Thuklau, he's fought impressively here in game number two, but he just can't hold on to that left-hand Nexus. Oh, good feedback, though. Onto the Vipers will stop the Abduct. So there's a Storm as well. Onto the Drones. There's another Abduct, though, with the Viper. That will be a dead carrier. Another Storm as well. Feedback, too, onto the Vipers. But those Vipers will be able to just go back to the uh, the buildings of Risky and just get back that energy. Yeah, again, like, fuck out his army control is pretty good. Like, he's been able to get a lot of disruptor shots, a lot of storms, a lot of feedbacks, but it's just his economy that's struggling. Yeah, as we do see Thuklau just trying to move forward. Once Oof. again, the abduct Colossus gets completely obliterated. As we do see the feedback just doing a really good job getting rid of the Viper energy, but it's just not enough here for Thuklau. As we do have the uh, Disruptor Purification Novas just trying to chip away these lurkers, mm. but Risk is just all over the map here, and there's just nothing that Thuklau can do about it. Exactly. His main army is out on the side of Risky. Is on the side of Risky's side, and he just doesn't have anything at home to defend. Yeah, I think this might be the final battle here for our Vietnamese Protoss player, as we do see him try and take out this base, but it's pretty much a moot point here mm -hmm. for Thuklau, because that base has uh, exhausted all of its resources. Knives seduct there onto the Disruptors, and the rest of the army is going down here for Thuklau. Exactly. The Hydras move forward, the Lorcas as well. Sure, there are good Disruptor shots, but that's all that he has. Yep, that is it. GG. Risky will be making it out of this group here. He will be advancing to DreamHack Masters Winter 2020 with a clean 5 and 0. Ooh, nicely done by Risky. Thuk Lao, again, he looked quite impressive there in that game. Like, there were moments where he had maybe even the superior army um, and was dealing a lot of damage, even some nice moves getting into the main and force fielding off that ramp. Yep, and unfortunately for Thuk Lao, he will be forced into a tiebreaker situation mm. there with uh, T-Ball and Azure, so... Uh, it'll be all uh, dependent on uh, the uh, little <laughs> mathematics, as they call it, uh -huh. <laughs> to yes. see who advances to uh, second place with the direct uh, seed and then the third place for the last chance qualifier. Yes, as I believe that concludes our Group A matches. And now we just need to go through the standings, figure out where all the placements are to confirm who will be coming out second and who will be coming out, more importantly, third, or who gets placed third in that group for that qual final qualifying match. Yeah, so we'll just have to... Uh, let the uh, standings work itself out. But that is Group A done for the tournament. And then we have only got one more game left in the round robin stage, and that will be a uh, Group B PVZ. Yeah, <laughs> another PVZ to round us off, at least until that qualifying match, which could be one as well. Um, but yeah, again, just really well done by, like, I'm impressed by Thuklau. Even though he ended up losing that series, like, he, he looks good in, in game two. Yep, so let's just recap uh, the games that we've seen so far. A lot mm. of two zeros. Actually, only two zeros. We haven't even seen a 2-1 at all. Mm -hmm. But we'll, I think definitely we'll be seeing more than our two games in our last chance qualified because it is a best of five better. Yeah, so we did just did see uh, Risky 2-0 over Thuklau. And then the next game, uh, next series rather, will be Ender versus Blisk. And I think that will determine uh, who will be first place in that group. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if uh, whoever loses that series will have to uh, figure out whether they'll have to play in the th third place match. It just, mm. I think it just depends on a few things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if I recall, both Ender and Bliss, they're both at the top of their group. Um, I think they're both tied at the moment. But of course, this next series will determine who comes out first and who comes out second. And regardless, like that's a pretty spicy matchup. Yeah, uh, given the fact that Blisk was really impressive there against Demi taking mm -hmm. that um, series two and zero, I think Blisk might be the uh, big favorite uh, for that match against Ender. Oh yeah, definitely, it's it's possible. I mean, Ender he does have a different playstyle to Demi, but still, it's no easy feat to two O Demi. Yeah, absolutely. We all thought that Demi was going to be a big favorite yesterday, but it looks like mm -hmm. he's not doing too well today. Yeah. I was about to say, we all thought Demi would win there, except for production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good big props to production <laughs> once again. As uh, Yeah, we are just uh, trying to figure out what the, uh, uh, the standings are, mm -hmm. like seeing who will qualify, who won't be qualifying. 
uh, Ender versus Blisk will be that next match, as we said. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how things go when if they go down to head to head because Stocklau he did fairly well, and it looks like we do have updated standings. Yeah, so the queues will mean the uh, qualifiers will be risky. And Azure going through, he doesn't have to go through that gauntlet of the last chance qualify. And it looks like T Ball has the better map score over Thuklau. So the big story of this weekend ends up being a sad uh, mm. ending. <laughs> yeah. I guess it all came down to that PvP, that head-to-head, -head, right? Earlier today, it happened off-screen, but T-Ball did 2-0 Thuklau. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we won't be seeing Thuklau there in the last chance. It will be T-Ball instead. And obviously, in Group B, the top of the uh, table will be Blisk versus Ender. That will be our next series. And whoever wins that will be advancing in first place. And mm -hmm. then whoever will be losing that series uh, will be part of that little group yeah. there with Razorblader and Demi. Uh, to figure out who will be advancing in second and third, respectively. Yeah, again, it's a very important matchup to determine who's going to be coming out third because, again, it could kind of come down to that head-to-head -head, um, just like it did for Thuklau and Tebow. All right, stay tuned for our last round-robin series of the day. It will be a PVZ. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, third base here from Thuklau looking very vulnerable with the Nexus and we get a lot of damage done with it. The Disruptors, speaking of which, we do have the Banelings, Zerglings and Roaches coming in here to the third base. I don't think there is uh, enough here for Thuklau, oh. but we do have the Disruptors, but really nice split. Oh, run by. oh, we do have the... Oh my god, that is a lot. Of, yeah, but we do see the Banelings coming in here for Risky. Onto, oh, nice force fits though, mitigating a lot of the skill to have and more importantly... <laughs> oh, the Oh, oh my god, no. every single one! Thuklau is trying to do multiple things at once. Oh. Really nice force field there from Thuklau blocking the ramp. Oh, yeah. I do see Thuklau just trying to move forward once again. The abduct base has uh, exhausted all of its resources. Knife seducts there onto the disruptors and the rest of the army is going down here for Thuklau. Exactly, the Hydras move forward, the Lurkers as well. Sure, there are good disruptor shots, but that's all that he has. G'day StarCraft fans, I'm Maynard. Here to help you get that mental edge over your opponents with the Dare Ice Coffee Play Like a Pro series. For this video, we're going to be talking about how to manage the workers for each of the races in StarCraft 2. The races in StarCraft are very different, but as far as producing workers goes, Protoss and Terran are very similar. You want to be constantly building workers and never stopping until you hit the number dictated in your build. If you're a Protoss or a Terran, make sure your next eye or command centers are hotkeyed and keep those workers coming. The only time you pause building workers earlier than intended is if you're under pressure and need the money to build emergency defenses. But don't forget to get back to it later. Zerg works very differently. Their workers, the drones, come from lava, which spawn from the hatchery. But lava is also used to build all army units. That can make this tricky. Use overlords, creep, and scouting zerglings to know when to make workers and when to make army units. Most build orders lately will have a certain drone count to scout your opponent at and make sure you're still safe to macro up. If you ever want to check how many workers you have in total, mouse over the supply in the top right in game. The pop-up will show you your worker supply and your army supply as well. Almost just as important, check your Dare Ice coffee supply, open up the fridge, and make sure it's stocked up before your next game. The more workers and bases you have, obviously the more income you're going to have. But make sure you're correctly saturating your bases as much as possible. The numbers over your base and the gas geysers will let you know if you're below or above optimal saturation. Use camera hotkeys or separate base hotkeys to periodically check. This is so important, as a player could have way more workers than their opponent. But if they are super oversaturated on a base or two, the one with the more efficient mining will often have more income. Here's to some efficient macro and happy StarCrafting. <sighs> oh, I did I put them? Come on, Jack. Where are you? <laughs> Jack! Sammy, first I need to carry you in the game, now in real life. It's the game, Jack! The game! Alright, on one condition. We're playing this together. Of course. How are we doing this? Easy. Western Union. I use it all the time. They'll put it in your bank account way faster than a bank transfer. We're talking minutes. And... Done. Got it. You're my hero. So when are we playing this? Tomorrow? No way. I'm playing it now. Yes. G'day, 
mate. Mr. Murray, have you decided on a name? We're thinking Callum. <laughs> this is Callum Murray. <laughs> to the seafood aisle. Calamari. Why'd they name you that? <laughs> I take you. Calamari. <laughs> Let's make it Jack. Drink it through with Dare Ice Coffee. Multiple witnesses have reported mysterious shadow sightings all around the city. The origin of these shadows is still unclear. Did somebody say that you love me? Get delivery like a G. See? Hungry dogs gotta eat. I get mines every day, every week. Chicken wings to the crib, I'm sitting in. Tacos to the chateau, please. Did somebody say? Private jetting in the night sky. My man hand glide by with my fried rice. Ride. M E N U L O G. Somebody say, Menula. your style get your merch at shop.esogaming.com